Week three, where do we go? Showtime. We could go to the hole or we could go to Twitter offices. We're gonna be losing some stamina, so we need to go find some. I say we go to the hole, maybe. Let's go to the hole. Car stop! Time for the plot line! Hey, you just reached a high amount of hype. Good for you! Does that mean you're aiming for the hype based destination? If so, there's a wacky adventure that could unlock a lair for that destination. Wanna go for it? Yep. Let's go! Great, the adventure will be waiting for you on the road. Sorry for breaking the fourth wall, see ya! A hole in the desert! Man, they'll turn anything into a tourist trap. That's... Some say the hole is bottomless, but they can't really be true, right? Or can it? Well, since you're here, what do you want to do? We could increase our money by admiring the hole, forfeit material goods, or pull a prank! If we pull a prank, our hype is gonna go up. We don't need that right now. I say we increase our... Money! We admire the big hole! You all pick up guided audio tours from the gift shop and enjoy a tour of the hole together! Polly! 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 Listen. The nice British man in the tape says the first hole was dug over a million years ago! I didn't know we even had that many years ago! Uh -uh. Man, check out this hole! This is a nice hole, huh? I thought staring into the bottomless pit of darkness would be existential and weird, but it's pretty chill. After the tour, you drop off your audio tours at the gate with a nice elderly couple who runs the place. Bye. Thanks for the cool hole, guys. It's been real. They start to wave goodbye, then the old man bursts into tears. Aww. Oh, sorry. Was it something we said? Uh, it's been unreal. Is that better? No, don't worry. You kids were great. The other old man sighs. We wish we could find more visitors like you to keep us from going bankrupt. We bought this hole 40 years ago from a handsome entrepreneur who promised it'd make us rich and famous overnight. Ugh. You bought a hole in the desert from a guy? Did he even dig it? I'm pretty sure some guy just scammed you into giving him money for a hole. Sure, but at first our investment paid off. The bottomless hole was once what you kids might call the new Coachella. But now Coachella is the new Coachella, and none of the young folk come to see the hole anymore. Look, we could help you get more customers, I guess, but you gotta promise to invest your money better from now on. Sounds like a plan. Time to put on your business consultancy pants and help the old couple rebrand the hole to make it popular again. What do we do? Market the hole to basic crass dude bros who brag about having been to every hole ever? Or market the hole as the perfect starting point for very bad golfers? This will lose us hype, so... I say we market the hole to basic crass dude bros. Uh, that's a cheap shot, Amira, but sadly I think it'll probably work, even if it costs us two soul. Well, they say sex sells. Looks like sexism sells too! Soon dudes and bros and whole fraternities flock in from all over to claim their right to being in every hole. Oh! Wow, that worked quick! I guess bros really like digging holes! <laughs> It's not that these guys just can't stand having their fragile masculinity shaken by being the butt of the joke. They have to be able to say they've been to every hole, it's dumb. Hey Scott, good to see your little cousin here. Now we've all been to every hole. Bro. Bros, you here to admire the big hole too? Wanna bury some bones in it? Damn, little Scotty wants to bone the hole. You're wild, bro. Let's do it. <laughs> Ray, I'm being included. Huh. I rest my case. Well, you're not proud, but at least your plan worked. The whole owners pay you two money for consultancy. And it seems like no, Scott had a good time. That's all that mattered. Where do we go? We need to gain some stamina. I say we go to the used car dealership. We haven't been there at all. Car stop. Time for the plot line. You drive past Suzanne and Whiskey, wiping grease off their arms outside of an old car mechanic shop. You pull over to say hi. Hey, bro. Hey, bros. What are you up to? We're working on our bumper car to enter in the annual Bumpin' Uglies tournament. It's a no-holds-barred knockout battle royale held at Knifeland every year, and we're gonna have to fucking crush it. Especially with my incredible misdirection strategy. Those amateurs won't even know what hit them. 
Nah, fuck misdirection. The best strategy is to crash into everyone else first and hard. Suzanne, I don't know if bumping uglies is the right place for a full frontal assault. We should play defensively. I know you'd rather take the thrill seeker route, but the only thrill I seek is the thrill of victory! But what's the point of even bumping uglies if you're not willing to play hard and dirty and possibly kill your partner? Because I'm your partner and I don't want to die! That non-team player thinking is exactly why we haven't settled on a final design for our car yet. <laughs> you know, Amir has got lots of experience butting in on other people's problems. I bet she could help you pick out a final design. Sure, why not? Which design do you like best, Amira? What do we go for? The baby on board is the better design. You'll avoid full confrontation, since most cars will avoid running over a baby. Or the just lots of eels is the better design. It doesn't avoid full confrontation, but it provides a fuck ton of eels, which will then be weaponized for great full confrontation. We're already gaining hype, so let's go with the baby to lose some for now. Fuck yeah, that was my idea! You have excellent taste, Amira! I call bias! Of course Amira could tell it was your idea! It's so like you to use a deceptively adorable exterior to hide a badass interior! I'll take that as a compliment! Even if Suzanne's not enthused, you're confident that the baby on board is a smarter strategy, and you gain two mind from your keen insight! Later, at Knifeland's 12th annual Bumpin' Uglies tournament, a team of banshees are competing in the bumper car battle royale! Someone's coming up on our right! The one at the wheel shouts, It's... Wait, is that a giant baby? Huh? No, that's definitely just a bumper car disguised with paper mache to look like a baby! But there's still a chance that it really is a giant baby that's wandered onto the battlefield. We can't risk accidentally hurting a baby! They spend too long arguing and the baby car is upon them! Suzanne and Whiskey jump out of the paper mache flaps with chainsaws ready! Vroom 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 vroom! Surprise, bitches! Ah! Was someone too scared to murder a little baby? Woo! I told you not to do the baby voice, man! And I told you that if we're doing the baby car, I'm doing the baby voice! I'm Method Suzanne! Despite being cringe about it, Suzanne and Whiskey get the drop on the foes and totally chainsaw them to death. I guess this is working, but pretending to be a baby is still a cowardly way to win. This is kinda bringing down my hype. Witique it all you want, you just can't acknowledge the brilliance and badassery of my superior intelligence! Ugh. The woo! And so you're lured to the dealership mesmerized by inflatable air dancers and bombastic signs full of exclamation points, such as by the day! You don't even know why you're here, you don't need a new car, but such is the power of eye-catching marketing! Big sale! Eh, since you're here, you could go do your usual weird shenanigans, why not? So, what's it gonna be, Amira? What do we want to do? Go on a joyride, sell some cars, dance with the air dancers? Let's, uh... If we go on a joyride, that's kinda hype. We'll be gaining one, two, three... Yeah, I think we'll be fine, let's go... Sell some cars! As you and your friends are browsing the assorted cars, a nervous-looking gentleman approaches you and says, Excuse me, do you work here? As far as you know, yes! Great, um, can you help me choose a car to buy? There are so many options, I just can't make up my mind. Absolutely, why not buy this gently used sports car? It's got a stick shift, which I heard is on its way back. Um, I'm not sure about the color. <laughs> What's not to like about red? It's the color of wine, except when it's not. Yeah, but is it the true red? It looks more like a cinnamon, or maybe it's closer to blood orange. Oh god. How much storage does this car have? Um, um the only measurement I know is Scott's. Want to see how many times I can fit in the trunk? No, thank you. I'm realizing storage space and color aren't so important. What's really bugging me is the number of wheels. I mean, four wheels is the classic number of wheels. But is it the number of wheels I really want in the car? Amira, step up and sell the car to this man before I find out he fits in the trunk! Ah, uh, okay, there's gotta be something you can do to get this guy to hurry up and buy the damn car. Sweeten the deal, if he buys the car, he could also have one of your kidneys! Nope, we need our stamina. Lie and tell him the car looks crappy as a camouflage technique to adapt to the surroundings of a used car dealership. Its real form is a kick-ass battle robot from space. I love giant robots, we love 
giant robots. Megas XLR, let's go! Whoa! Whoa! This is a battle robot from space? That's awesome! Uh, yeah, totally! This used car is actually a refugee from a car robot civil war devastating the planet. Planet. Car robot planet. Really? Isn't the name of that planet a little on the nose? <sighs> I mean, I'm a ghost named Polly Guys, but you don't hear me crying. Fair enough. So what features does this car robot hybrid have? All kinds. It comes with battle lasers, a jetpack, 16-wheel drive, centuries of rage directed at the bike droids. Who are these bike droids? They're the arbitrary evil rogue race of robots from Car Robot Planet. They want to steal our planet's life force and destroy all monsters. Um, I don't know if I want to buy a car that wants to wipe out my entire species. No, no, sir, that'd be the bike droids. This one is a car bot. They're the good guys. Uh, I think I get it now. Can I see the robot's form? I want to check out some of its features. No, you can't! It's uh, hibernating right now in preparation for the impending car bot versus bike droid war. We can't interrupt its slumber. That's fine, I understand. I also get a bit cranky if I'm woken up without my coffee, lol. Wow, lol, you're so funny. Are you gonna buy the damn thing or not? He is apparently. You earn two money from your sale but lose two soul for, you know, scamming that poor idiot. But we got rid of him, Shut which is time. good. Very good. Yes. Okay, where do we go? We could go to the caves or to the ranch. Let's embrace our inner horse girl. Sunshine, open fields of rolling wheat and pounding hooves. This truly is a horse's paradise. Horsies! Science has proven that there are three activities to do with horsies. Question is, which one are you doing today? Ride the horsies, whisper to the horsies, or worship the horsies. Let's ride the horsies. You and your friends enter the stables to see a familiar red-headed fuckibus brushing one of the horse's manes. Howdy! Hey, I know you! You're Sawyer, right? From summer camp! Indeed I am, but today I'm Sawyer from this ranch. I can see that! Do you visit this ranch a lot? Yeah, I really like the horses here. They're easier to vibe with than people sometimes. Huh. That's cool, we just stopped by hoping we could ride some of the horsies. Do you have any suggestions which one are good to ride? Totally. How experienced are you guys at horseback riding? Not at all, but you'll do anything to impress your friends, including lying about being a pro at an extremely dangerous activity. You say you're an expert equestrian! Nice. I don't personally have any experience horseback riding, but I am an expert at riding things cowgirl style. Aww. Um, I hope you guys won't judge me for this, but I've actually never ridden a horse before. Don't be embarrassed. We'd never judge your worth based on your ability to ride a horse. That's dumb. Fuck. Polly, how about you ride Hazelnut? She's a good girl who loves apples and long trots on the beach. I think you'll get along. Scott, since you're a first-timer, you can take Chonk. He's our buffest pony and he's very gentle. He can handle a surprisingly heavy rider. Awesome, bro! Woohoo! I love you, Chonk! We're gonna have a soulful connection and be best horse bros forever! Amira, since you're so experienced, I'm putting you on the big boss. He's a wild stallion that has yet to be tamed. But you've got this, right? You look into big boss's wild, murderous eyes and you know you absolutely do not got this. But you can't admit you lied! How will you tame the stallion? We placate the wildness of the stallion by numbing its spirit through the power of late capitalism and its many entertaining temptations. Or promise him you'll take turns. You'll be the horse next time. Let's use our money. We will pay off the wild horse. The stallion is wild and indomitable, but any indomitable spirit can be numbed with the power of an endless stream of mindless media. You spend too money subscribing to Netflix, the premier horse streaming platform. The content on Netflix is not the best, since it's staffed and consumed entirely by horses, who don't have thumbs, but Big Boss seems to enjoy it. You end up binge-watching The Amazing Horse Race, where horses race around the world while also solving clues and interacting with locals. They must travel only by airplane, boat and taxi, and other public transportation options despite their limited budget, and the fact that most of these options don't allow horses. Wow, Amira, I'm impressed. Not even I could break Big Boss, but you got him to sing into the couch all afternoon. 
Good, good. You don't have to pay much attention to Sawyer. You're too distracted by MasterChef. But with horses. Is this a cooking show for horses? Can they even use cooking utensils? Not really, but that hasn't stopped them from making the Great British Bake Off. But with horses. And MasterChef, but with horses. Celebrity Edition, among many others. You gain too hype for finding new weird shows to binge watch. And because Big Boss looks funny lazing around the sofa. We tame Big Boss. And now, time for our last stop. Let's gain some more stamina. Brave in the desert. In the middle of the desert, ravers and partygoers have gathered to dance their cares away. You're drawn to some blurry figures in the crowd, ethereal beings who look like they were made out of party. party time. As you behold them, you wonder how should you milk the vibes of this rave. Let's try to get some drinks! As you and your friends approach the bar, three happy-go-lucky party spirits approach you! Polly, you magnificent bitch! I didn't know you were coming to this rave! <laughs> OMG, hi! Hi! Scott, Amira, meet Summer Macarena and Cheese. They're the ghosts of parties past. Sup, dudes. Any friend of Polly's is a friend of ours. Whoa, your fur is so furry. Can I pet it? <laughs> go ahead. Let's go to the bar. First round is on us. You approach the bar. Macarena slides down her sunglasses, gives the bartender a look, and does some weird hand gestures. Ah, yes, Naruto hand signs. A tequila moonrise, three water bottles, a tall glass of vodka, a sex on the beach, and a pewter mug with a crazy straw coming up. Wow, you try to order, but the bartender completely misses you and helps someone else. Too bad you don't know the BSL, bartender sign language. Don't feel bad, Amira. Summoning the bartender takes a lot of practice. We'll wait for you and Scott to get your drinks. Listen, the DJ's playing my favorite song. Uh, if I can get reincarnated one day, I hope I'm reborn as this song. It's such a bop. You said it, my tiny dude. Vibing to this song is 100% my unfinished business. Hey, if you guys really want to dance, we could find you after we get our drinks. It's okay. Thanks, Scotty. Really? Thanks, Scott. You're the best. Let's get our drinks, Amira. Mr. Bartender, can you please serve us? But like, when you have the time, no pressure. Uh, your shyness and Scott's politeness isn't gonna get your drink any faster. You need to go big if you want to get the bartender's attention. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Use your wish number 10 from the monkey's paw to ask for the most flamboyant hairdo ever, so that you're unignorable. Or disguise yourself as a waiter's long-lost sibling, then ask him for a reunion drink. This might lose us soul and this will lose us magic, let's go with magic. Ah, the monkey's paw. You remember buying it from the weird old man who only spoke in cryptic, vaguely threatening sentences. This paw comes with immense power. You could use it to wish for whatever you can imagine. But beware, your wishes may come true. <laughs> Which is good, right? Wishes coming true is the end game of any wish you could ask for. Enjoy your paw, but remember, the wishes are limited. And most importantly, there's no coming back from whatever you wish for. <laughs> the old man really had a low bar for things that made him laugh, but okay. Limited wishes. Only rule is not wishing your past wishes to be unwished. Easy. You tuck the paw in your pocket and promise yourself that you'd save it for a real emergency. And that emergency is finally here. You use two magic for your wish and... Whoa! Whoa! Amira, did you do something with your hair? It's so flamboyant and impossible to look away from. Yep, thanks to the monkey's paw, you have a new obnoxious do. The bartender can't possibly miss you now. Huh? But you could have wished for anything, right? Why didn't you just wish for drinks for us? Or for infinite free drinks for that matter? You shush him. Silly Scott, he can't comprehend the nuances of wishing on a monkey's paw. Let's be clear, your hair is spectacular, the colors, the volume, the overpowering odor. It's a full mood, the ultimate vibe, a memory to be cherished. Forget about the likely severe cursed consequences of using the monkey's paw and just embrace the dew. The bartender serves you your drinks. If only to get away from your sensory overloading hair, you gain two stamina and return to your friends. She used the monkey's paw, didn't she? Hey! It's a great do! Ah, whatever. Damien will love it. The night okay. 
Time to talk to Damien for a deep conversation. Uh, where to go now? Let's get real. His plans for the future. Ooh. Well, now that you ask, I do have plans for what comes next after school. Lately, I've been thinking, being the Prince of Hell is cool and all, but that's my birthright. My dad's there fucking the best, but what if Dahlia has a point in calling me spoiled little prince? I might end up wanting to reign over hell, but what if I wanted to do something else? I need to leave the royal nest and explore who I want to be, by myself. But paying rent with the gold from my family war chest sounds like cheating. So the first step is getting a job then. Nothing royal, a true entry-level job in hell that I could get even if I was a Lave. <laughs> Damon's little big adventure. <laughs> exactly. So recently, I started working on my resume. I need to nail that if I want to get a decent job. But most of my past experiences, uh, crimes and arson. The resume needs to set some boundaries so they don't take advantage of me and push for horrible work conditions, like on Twitter. You give them your hand and they munch your whole friggin' arm off. Sometimes literally. Doing this right is like a science, and I'm more of a butcher than a surgeon if you get me. I could lend you a hand, as long as you don't munch my whole arm. I would never do that, unless it was a sex thing with previous consent. Good to know. But seriously, Amira, you're the best. I know. Okay, let me look. Aww. For education, you put street smarts. Best kind of smarts! What do you think of my special skills section? Survived in nature for more than two weeks. Yes, even pooped in the woods. Can probably survive in the workplace for more than two weeks, too. Would poop in the workplace if necessary. Yikes. Okay, yes, definitely let me help you. Fuck yeah! What else should I put on my resume? Best trait. Passionate about everything I do. I would murder for this job. Yes, I will murder if you need me to. I may murder even if you don't need me to. Past jobs, Prince of Hell, so young and in such a high position already. Or languages, native level speaker of Infernal Enochian, Abyssal and Belly's Babel, fluent and common monster and swearing. This seems like the most logical choice, but this seems like the most Damien choice. What? No? Really? Okay, we go with the logical one. Hey, that's true! It's not a bad idea either, speaking several languages is always impressive. I was raised on all three hell languages for diplomacy reasons. That can prove useful in a job. And speaking common monster is no small feat either. Since hell has been opening its borders to the monster realm, tourism has flourished. I can only imagine the understanding the culture and language of the monster realm is quickly becoming a great asset. So I may have an ace up my sleeve by studying over here. Good catch, Amira. For sure. Of course, I totally suggested it because I understand the current socioeconomics of hell. And not because out of all of my dumb ideas, this one was the only one that didn't fuck with the presented criteria. What? Uh, nothing. Also, thanks for noticing, I'm proficient at swearing. <sighs> no prob, it's a charming aspect of you. Like, you could practice with me, you know, if you wanted. You're trying to imply it's part of a sex thing, aren't you? Yes? Heh, <laughs> we'll see you, silly dumbass. For the rest of the night, Damon tries to teach you how to say naughty things in abyssal tongue. It uses a lot of tongue. You wonder if you could eventually put it to use with him one day. Ah, uh, who knows? Is Damien more than a friend? Yes. And we're too hype away from heading towards Knifeland. We have to lose some hype. Let's go, go, go!